Mini episode 985 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Welcome to FDH Lounge mini episode number 985. I'm FDH managing partner Rick Morris here with our preview of Billions episode 3.8. Here's our top five developments coming out of episode 3.7. Number five, the Axe case is dead, as are Dake and Connerty's careers at Eastern. Dake's federal career is over, while Brian is back under Chuck's thumb and stuck working with Kate, who he now despises, so he might actually envy his old boss. And the federal case, unsurprisingly, could not withstand the combined efforts of arch enemies Chuck and Bobby. Is the grudge also dead? With Wendy having forgiven both of them for the strife that they put her through, you would think that they would both quit while they're ahead, but is it in the nature of either one? Also, perpetrating the feud would get in the way of Chuck's miraculously resurrected gubernatorial hopes, so a huge test of his self-control lies ahead. Number four, the cannon fodder around the main players survives to various extents. We already covered Dake and Connerty. Sacker and Carl are doing just fine by having sided wholeheartedly with Chuck, Dr. Gilbert's going away for five years, albeit with an eight-digit payoff. Mafi's payoff is only seven figures, but he's left with a sense of it being blood money, the embarrassment of a blot on his record, and probably the knowledge deep down that he got played by Wendy. Taylor's pissed at what was done to Mafi, but by this point we don't view the acting head of Axe Capital as mere cannon fodder. Nor does Taylor, so things are going to get interesting now that Bobby's back in charge. Number three. Taylor finally challenges the ethos of Axe Capital just as Bobby resumes control. All along, the issue of Taylor's moral code has loomed in the background and not asserted itself, even when company business meant squeezing vulnerable communities in upstate New York and in Brazil. But the sight of puppy dog Mafi being squeezed when he originally brought Taylor into the firm, that was putting a human face on the misery. To see Wendy bear the brunt of the scorn was interesting, because it was the first time that we've ever really seen her cross moral lines, but it won't take long until Taylor is squaring off directly with Bobby, and maybe entertaining those other offers after all. Number two, to borrow the parlance of another great prestige drama, Wendy Breaks Bad. We've never seen Wendy directly stooping into the mire that is all around her, and it's jarring to witness. First when she suggests finding a patsy to frame, and later in her manipulation of Mafi, which on top of everything else is completely unprofessional, given that she used her position as his therapist of sorts to push his buttons. Hopefully the coming weeks will give some indication of just how far she went on the framing issue. If she was okay with somebody completely innocent going down, or if she knew that it would be somebody less guilty, but still implicated in the plot, as was the case. Will the compromising of Wendy's moral compass be temporary, or is this who she is now? Or will she end up regretting her decisions and try to atone? She's become potentially the most fascinating person right now out of a fascinating ensemble. Number one, we've never seen anything like this before on a prestige drama, an episode that would make a fine series finale coming in the middle of a season. The new golden age of TV, as proclaimed by critic Alan Sepinwall, is about two decades old, since many designate Oz and The Sopranos as the first ones. And now we've seen a first that possibly nobody could have ever truly anticipated. Many shows end a season on a note that could conceivably serve as a series finale. Occasionally that's deliberate, as in the case of Magic City and Boss, both of which were sadly wrapped after just two seasons. But now we've seen the Axelrod case, the climactic development of the high-stakes feud that has defined this series, dismissed due to the combined efforts of the archenemies, in the middle of a season. The aftermath, with the emptiness felt by Chuck, Wendy, and Bobby, and what should have been their moment of triumph and relief, could have served as an epilogue for everything that we have seen thus far. But, wonderfully for the viewers, life on billions goes on. Bobby takes his firm back, and Chuck resumes his still-quiet run for governor. 
How much those storylines will overlap is now very uncertain. We know that the Russian billionaire played by John Malkovich is on the horizon, and that should spice things up. There's still much to be done, and Billions has achieved many artistic triumphs thus far. But now, as they move to the end of the series, hopefully not before a few more seasons, they face a challenge of their own making, writing an ending that's better than the one that they could have had last week. It's going to be great watching them try. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all Clear Channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Ohio. Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Papermate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse and the Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 